One of our cornfields, uh, which was uh, wheat stubble with um, about knee-high red clover in it in the spring that we uh, burned off using Integrity and Roundup. Um, and it killed, burned everything off pretty quick and it was crispy when we no-tilled into this uh, heavy residue situation. These are smart stock corn. Um, as you can see, pretty decent looking cobs on it. Population not perfect, but uh, the back of the farm is better than the front here. But uh, we're fairly happy considering all the time and uh, money we saved not having to do primary and secondary tillage um, and getting a good growth on our um, clover crop. But something interesting with uh, no-till, um, it's always our nemesis as no-tillers, is uh, the slugs. And this is the first time I've ever really seen slugs feeding um, this late in the year. Um, you can see them right on there feeding on the stalks and they've eaten the brace roots, okay? Which I wasn't aware that they were eating brace roots to the point if we go take a look over here that we've got some lodging happening. Here's evidence of my uh, little friend uh, and see that the brace roots have been uh, to the point where look, they're gone. So, um, we need Monsanto or or Dow AgroScience to come up with a slug uh, tolerant uh, species. Now, as you can see, or stock trait, as you can see on um, that the cob is decent on this plant, uh, but the combine's going to have trouble getting it. Now, uh, economic losses are not known at this point, considering the amount that we saved. Um, uh, not having to do with the extra work to the farm. But, um, you know, you can see there is quite a bit down in here. And, you know, I, might, I may be wrong on my diagnosis that that's uh, slug feeding that's done that. But um, using the video here, I'll have to, have to send it in to uh, somebody better experienced than me to see if that's what's going on. And, um, you know, we'll have to just uh, keep an eye on them. I've got some ideas... Uh, that we're going to look into in the future here of how we're going to handle these slugs. I know everybody says you can't do anything about them, but I've got some ideas. Here's another part of the field that I'm in where uh, the damage is not as extensive. Oh, looks like we're into a spot here where there wasn't much. And then back into good stuff. I've noticed in the past that our slug issues also, um, if we always do a split planter and man you could see sometimes that they like certain varieties better than others, um, but I mean I think anybody would be happy to have a stand like this and, and the slugs seem to be, they like different varieties and they seem to be in different areas, um, usually as a result of how much residue is actually laying flat on the ground. So. Um, I gotta get a hold of an, uh, somebody who knows these uh, species inside and out. I'm back in that field that uh, we were showing the slug damage on before. The headlands are off, which gives me a good opportunity to see if uh, what we were looking at uh, was slug damage um, just in the headlands. And the reason that would be is uh, what I find is um, when the residue has been trampled from, you know, turning on the headlands, I find when, the, when there's more residue flat on the ground, we have uh, worse slug damage. And uh, kind of interesting here, what I've uh, found out um, on just basic observations, if you see down these rows here, you can see there's a lot of corn down, okay? This is uh, one variety, and I'm going to take a quick walk in. And you can see, as we're coming down the row, I'll just get over into a different more area, more example where there's more of it. But you can see there's a lot of this root lodging here from uh, what I believe to be slug feeding all the way down, quite a bit down here. I haven't done any percentage counts or anything. But uh, when I go over to the other variety, I'm in the other variety now. I'll get down a row just standing a lot better. And as you can see, there's no lodging down this row. If I take a look at the roots, they do exhibit a bit of the pruning that we saw, but they're not as severe. There's some of it right there. 
but the plant is a lot a lot sturdier plant if I give it a kick it's not knocking over now this is not uncommon from what we found in the past uh, more it has been more predominant the past three or four years where slugs prefer to eat one variety over another once again need to speak to a slug expert to kind of figure out why that is but um, definitely part of our mission has been to highlight varieties and genetics that don't seem to have as, uh, slugs don't seem to have as much of an effect on um, we've seen up to 40 bushels difference in side-by-side -side comparisons um, in 2008 uh, where slug feeding uh, was the sole yield robber from that uh, variety anyway we're trying to work for to solutions to some of these problems that um, make sense and cost very little money so it takes a bit of time to think of them back to that variety again that looks a lot better now we're back to the other one you can see the lodging so that's why we always plant 12 and 12 is so we can see things like this one, one point I uh, wanted to make sure I uh, made note of was that uh, you know this slug feeding that we're seeing um, on these corn varieties seems to happen all year long um, when, a, when the slugs like a variety they seem to go right up the plant affect all the leaves they eat the silks they eat the you know all, all parts of the plant and then uh, which really blows my mind is they'll start in the fall they'll keep eating when the when the plant has dried down to harvestability they, they're still feeding on these roots and uh, just really interesting uh, species these slugs they, they're really like I said there are no tillers nemesis but you have to have respect for them because they keep beating us so we'll figure out a way to beat them you know when I say that uh, we'll figure out a way to beat these slugs um, you know I, I do realize uh, that um, a way to avoid having any slug infestation is uh, through uh, means of tillage um, I do realize that that is a way to get rid of them but I, I believe that we'll be able to come up with a solution whether it be cultural uh, as far as picking a variety or um, uh, you know I've got some other theories I think there'd be a way to do it with only either changing planter attachments or you know um, something very simple where we don't have to go out and make a whole big capital investment in in uh, tillage equipment bunch of wearing parts that uh, um, you know we drag through our soil and kind of disturb what we've been working toward um, which is this this um, fantastic uh, rejuvenating ecosystem um, of uh, soil structure so we'll uh, we'll keep working away at it